You know, I got notice about this because Bark is on the mailing list for the BLM, and we have worked on a lot of other timber sales, which I'll talk about. But um, so we get the information about this, but of course we just get a map, and I don't really know what's out here until I've come out here. And so I knew that I was going to make a visit at some point, um, but usually most of our work is in the national forests, and so. It takes, it honestly takes somebody calling me usually for these BLM areas and saying, hey, we're really concerned, can you come out and take a look at it? And Laura was the one that called me about this timber sale, and I was kind of like, and, and, you, and you were telling me all about it, and I was kind of like, wow, that sounds like a really cool place. And so I came out here, and, and it, what is remarkable to me is that these little units of um, public land, even though in the perspective of like the whole national forest nearby, they're kind of small, they've been totally taken care of by the people that live around them and they're just as sort of loved and cared for as so many places in the national forest that I'm familiar with with the trails. And so I was actually out here yesterday with um, Carol, whose place that we just parked at, and she was one of, she's one of the people that works um, really hard on keeping this trail system open that is in the unit we're going to be walking in, the section we're going to be walking in. And she shared with me this map that she's made, which has all the, um, the trails, uh, and they're marked for you know, easy, moderate, and difficult. And so we've, we're going to walk on these trails and kind of enjoy the work that these residents have put into this area. Um, and hopefully start to kind of see why this area has a much higher value for its trails and its access for people that live here than the little bit of timber that they're going to be able to get f by logging on this area up here. But my experience so far has been that this is pretty special. Go to Google Earth and look at the entire area. This is, this is like, this is, this is the last reserve. There's, there's, there's some across fellows, and then there's this one, and then besides that, you see fields and clear cuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this, this is what's, what's holding the last of the, of the native wildlife. <laughs> Okay, we have a really nice forest here. We've got a diversity of species. We have hardwoods, we have a, a multi-story canopy, we have downwoody debris, we have large snags. And over here is a nice example. We have an opening, a clearing. So you have a diversity of light patterns. You don't have this monoculture of light you get, a lot, get in a lot of plantations. And what you have is down wood, that's the alders, the original early growing fast hardwoods have fallen over. They've reached the end of their time, they've fallen over. They've created this opening, so you have a nice diversity of light coming in through here. You have an opening here, and you've got the down woody debris on the ground creating a second type of habitat. So this is a very diverse forest, and it's a very, very, very healthy forest. And this is well on its way becoming late successional forest. I mean, it's on the edge right now in terms of the large trees that are already here, the large snags, down woody debris, multi-story canopy. This is right on the verge of, of, of a fully functioning late successional forest. To come in here and take out half the trees is ridiculous. The BLM often says, well, it's in our mission to log to help the local economy. And that's true. For these lands, that does exist in their kind of mission. But there's also, there's all these other things that also are included in it, such as access to recreation. And I don't think that the BLM quite understands that the local residents out here are doing their job for them. This would cost them, you know, another Zach, another recreation person, to have to come out here on a regular basis and maintain this. 
and yet you have these you know these people who are connected to this area who are keeping this up and using it enough to kind of keep the trails um, visible because of course trails will start to disappear if you leave them for too long for uh, trees to fall over on and then when the trees do fall there are people who are coming out and moving them and keeping it like you said accessible and so I kind of want to just shake the BLM and make sure that they really understand that if you upset the people who spend the time out here, they're not going to take as much time to keep these trails up if it doesn't look as nice, and then they're not. It, it eventually will, you know, not be what it is right now, which is this very uh, low maintenance on their end um, service that is in their mission as well, that, that, that is being pro provided without them doing anything. And as one of the other agencies, like the um, Forest Service, who we usually deal with, that is drastically underfunded and can't afford any of the projects that they say they're going to do unless it's somehow attached to a timber sale, such as here, um, I, they should be valuing that. I mean, they should understand that that's, a, that's something that they shouldn't be messing with. There is a disease of wicked proportion Love of money and gold Peace and love and strength. 